Welcome to the intro to player controls. In this video, we'll be learning how to set up player controls and how they're used with Playmaker actions. So first things first, navigate over to Edit, Project Settings, and then you'll probably have a window pop out. Let's do it like this. And then Input Manager. This menu is where you'll enter all the controls for your game. First, you have your axes. So this little drop down right here, all of these are your axes. Each one of these is called an axis, your horizontal axis, vertical axis, fire axis, etc. An axis represents a control for your game, like jump or shoot. And so each of these, if you expand them by clicking on this little triangle, you can see it has a negative button, a positive button, an alternative negative button, and an alternative positive button. That way you can set up multiple control schemes for your game, for both keyboard and game pads. You'll see here that in the default for Fire 1, we have left control and mouse zero. So obviously this means your left control button is Fire 1, but what is mouse zero? Well, Unity has a specific way it likes to address each of these controls, so mouse zero is actually left click. All these special names for inputs can be found here in the Unity doc for key codes. You'll find our mouse key codes. And you'll see mouse zero is the left or primary mouse button. A link to this document will be in the description. Now let's see how you might use these key codes with Playmaker. So I'm just gonna grab this empty game object, pop a little FSM in here, and I'm gonna search for a get button. And, and a get button down. And a get button up. These are all common actions you'll be using to call on the axes from your input manager. And you do that by just typing in the name. Remember that typing these inputs in is case sensitive and needs to be spelled exactly the same way. You'll see that by default, they come with fire one. So that means these actions are going to respond to a left mouse click. With these actions, you can send an event or store a bool value. So for example, in this get button action, I can store the result in a new variable. This is a bool variable and I'll call it clicking fire. And this is running every frame, so if I just hit play, if you watch this value down here in the editor, when I click, it turns to true, and stays true as long as I hold it, but when I let go, it turns to false. So let's just get rid of these really quick. You also have actions like get axis and get axis vector. These actions can be used to get a float value between negative one and one. So you can give controls like move forward and backward or left and right. Setting the controls for these actions works just the same, by entering in the name of the axes you've set. You'll see that the get axis vector action comes loaded in with the horizontal and vertical axes, since these axes are the most commonly referred to with this action. By default, those are mapped to the WASD and arrow keys. So let's take a look at our input manager at the horizontal and vertical axes. You'll see that they're mapped to the left and right, or A and D, and then the down and up, or S and W. This is the vertical one, this is the horizontal one. And you'll see that this is how they're spelled. They're spelled exactly the same for horizontal and for vertical. Now we can watch the input of this. If I wanted to, I could just store a vector, call this new variable movement vector three. And if I hit play, just watch the value down here change as I press my arrow keys. So if I hold forward, it'll go up to one and it drops back down when I let go. And if I hold backwards, it goes down to negative one and then drops to zero if I let go again. I'm probably gonna fall off the platform here, but if I hold left long enough, it goes to negative one, you see. And if I hold right long enough, it goes to one. In this lesson, we learned about the input manager, how each control gets an axis and how we can give them names like jump and fire. We learned that Unity uses a special code to refer to certain buttons and that we can find those codes in Unity's online manual. We learned that to use all our set inputs with Playmaker, we just need to enter in the same name from our input manager. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.